Now we're going to look at functions f from a general Euclidean space into one dimension. So we still take on scalar values, but now we can plug in more than two entries. And we're going to ask similar questions about now level curves. So suppose that we consider this set of points. And we want to know things like, well, what is the tangent plane? Um, what's the behavior of the gradient with respect to the tangent plane? All these things. So we're going to generalize all the stuff that we did for the two-dimensional case. A nice simple example is the simple quadratic function x squared plus y squared plus z squared. It's simple because we it's really easy to compute all its der derivatives and we know that f of x, y, z equals 1 defines the unit sphere. in R3. And we know what that looks like. So we know exactly basically what should should be going on. But we're going to show that our formalism can recover all of that. So let's consider the point. Our point of interest is going to be x naught, y naught, z naught is equal to square root 3 over 3 square root 3 over 3, square root 3 over 3. Simple, simple, easy point that's not, not too simple. And we note that df dz at this point is equal to 2 times, well, the partial of f with respect to z is just 2z. When I plug that in, I get square root 3 over 3. So this is 2 square root 3 over 3, which is not equal to 0. So the implicit function theorem tells me that I have a c1 function z of x comma y uh, with f of x, y, z of x, y equal to 1 around the point square root 3, 3, square root 3 over 3, square root 3 over 3, and of course z of square root 3 over 3, square root 3 over 3, is equal to square root 3 over 3. That's my implicit function theorem. Well now we want to figure out what's the tangent to this guy, to the sphere at that point. So we differentiate this implicit equation. And we have that, well 0 is of course the partial with respect to x of the constant 1, which because we are taking the derivative of an equation, we can plug in x squared plus y squared plus z of x y squared, right? So this is just telling me that my implicit function solves this constraint. And of course when I do that, I'm going to obtain 2x plus 2 dz dx of x, y times z of x, y, right? So I have to do a, a chain rule here. And if I evaluate this at x naught, y naught is equal to square root 3 over 3, square root 3 over 3, I get that 0 is equal to when we plug it in 
we are going to have 2 times square root 3 over 3, which is 2 square root 3 over 3. And then we're going to have, well, z is square root 3 over 3. Uh, and when I solve for this, I'll take uh, x over here, and I'm going to divide out by this z of x, y, and so ultimately I'm going to get a negative 1. So I get that dz dx, right? So if I solve for this equation at that x naught, y naught, I get negative 1. So I use this equation to solve for that. And when I do that, this becomes just a linear equation, which is extremely nice, right? Very nice. And similarly, this means that I can recover derivatives without having to actually know the function, which is sometimes more convenient. So similarly, uh, we've got that dz dy of x naught y naught is also equal to negative 1 because everything's symmetric in the way we chose our point. So 1 comma 0 comma negative square root 3 over 3 or uh, rather 1 is a direction on the tangent plane and so is 0, 1, negative 1. Right? So this I obtained by taking the partial with respect to x of x, y, z of x, y. This I got by taking the partial with respect to y, and those give me tangent directions of my, my sphere or at that point. So in particular, uh, the parametric equation for the tangent plane is then P of delta x delta y is equal to again a point which is of course already given to us When I change x, I move in this direction in the tangent plane. And when I change y, I move in this direction in the tangent plane. That's great. So that's our tangent plane. And what's the gradient at this point? The gradient of f at this point square root 3 over 3, square root 3 over 3, square root 3 over 3 is, and it's simple to compute, because this is a very simple function, and it's 2 square root 3 over 3, just coming from the exponent, 2 square root 3 over 3, 2 square root 3 over 3. Note, if I dot this thing with 1, 0, negative 1, I get 0. And if I dot this thing, the gradient, with the other direction on my tangent plane, I also get 0. Right? This is constant. I'm going to add 2 square root 3 over 3, and I'm going to subtract 2 square root 3 over 3. Same thing here. So therefore, del f at x naught, y naught, z naught is perpendicular to the tangent plane. Uh, so it is normal to the tangent plane. 
at that particular point. And so we have the normal equations, 2 square root 3 over 3, 2 square root 3 over 3, 2 square root 3 over 3, dotted with x, y, z, minus a point, negative square root 3 over 3, square root 3 over 3, square root 3 over 3, is equal to zero. That's the normal equation of the tangent plane. So I've got a, up here I've got the parametric, and here I just have to compute the gradient to know the normal equation. So I get a parametric and I get the normal. That's great. So in general my theorem is if f from rn into R1 is C1. I have continuous first derivatives. X0 is a point in Rn and DF DXI the partial with respect to uh, D little f at DXI evaluated at this point does not equal zero for some i and this is our now new definition of i.e. x naught is regular point of f so now we expand our definition of being a regular point. And this essentially says that the gradient does not entirely vanish. Uh, then A, the level set of F through x naught and we're going to note that by script f of f of x naught and that'll be equal to the set of points x1 up to xn such that little f of x1 up to xn is equal to f of x naught. So this is the graph of a real valued, all the values are real numbers, c1 function, right? We're just extending our, our notion of being the graph of a curve. So now I have a C1 function of n minus 1 variables, right? So in, in the two variable case, I reduce it down to one variable when I had a level curve through f at a point. And now I can increase it to n minus 1 variables. And also we have this fact about the gradient. The gradient del f at x naught is perpendicular, so this is the sign for perpendicular, to the tangent plane, or the tangent hyperplane. Of this set at x naught. So this set, this level set, has a tangent plane now instead of a tangent line, or a tangent hyperplane rather. Uh, and identifying our gradient at x naught 
with the Jacobian f at x naught v in Rn is a tangent direction or a tangent vector to f to the level set at x naught if and only if we have that d f at x naught times v so our Jacobian multiplied by v is the zero vector